Family Theater presents Mitzi Gaynor and Wallace Ford. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Six of One, starring Wallace Ford. And now, here is your hostess, Mitzi Gaynor. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. Now to our transcribed drama, Six of One, starring Wallace Ford as Harley Ferguson. Dinner in three minutes, Dad. I'll be ready. Just want to put some oil on this reel. Skipper. I'm coming, I'm coming. And Cousin Bill, will you please try to remember you aren't on a battleship? Not that you ever were. What's that crack supposed to mean, Cousin Grace? Uh, Simmer down. Let's eat before the food freezes. In World War II, my Walter was overseas. So was Hitler. As well as being an officer. Pass the cauliflower, please. Well, they offered me a commission at Great Lakes. Huh. If you'd learn to float. It isn't easy. Some guys never... Oh, oh, all right, let's settle down. Pass the cauliflower. Sorry. Here, Uncle Harley. Thank you. Heard anything about uh, your college application? No, sir. Cauliflower grace? Mm, no, not just now. I guess unless Commissioner Flanagan can pull some strings, I'll have to wait until the next semester. Hey, what's on this? All of you? Yes. Of course, we could afford more butter if a certain party would go out and look for a job. Wait off! It's part of eating a meal around here. And don't talk readjustment to me, no, because... No, no, wait a minute. My Walter was readjusted two months after he came home from Germany. The brass don't readjust, they re-enlist. Oh, well, what's the Quiet difference? Quiet now, honest? both of you. I don't want any more yelling. Uh, what kind of a restful evening meal is this? First day of my retirement, and I'm beginning to wish I were back carrying a mail bag. Bill? Yes, sir? Grace works hard a full day at the bank, then comes home and cooks for us. Oh, easy. And Grace. Yes. In five or six weeks, Bill may start college. Why well, take a job he'd have to drop? One last thing. I'm leaving tomorrow for Eagle Lake. Now, this is to both of you. Don't fight while I'm fishing. Pass the horse, Radish. No, no, here. And, uh, I apologize, Grace. <laughs> well, it's very easy to say Grace, I... Grace, Grace, you apologize. Mm, all right. Anything interesting happen at the bank today? Well, your big politician friend, George Downs, withdrew $250 this morning. I don't mean gossip. Was Patsy with him? No, and it's not gossip. He came and told me himself. Oh. Something he wants to see you about. He's coming by after dinner. Uh, do you know if Patsy's coming, too? He didn't say. I'll get it. Never mind, never mind. It's probably for me. Walter said he'd call. If it's the railroad station, about my ticket, let me talk to them. Hello? Yes, Walter. Mm-hmm. Yes, Walter. 7.30. I'll be ready. Bye now. I'd appreciate it if we can keep that wire open this evening. I'm expecting a call about my reservation. What train are you taking, Uncle Harley? 7.18 in the morning. The Sunrise Special? It's the one. Oh, but they're booked up way in advance. I'd... I'm first on the waiting list, and there's always a cancellation. Mm -hmm. I'll get it. No, no, it's probably George. You help Grace clear the dishes. There's no dessert, so you want to take your iced tea with you? Fine. Mm. Harley, Harley, my boy. Have a seat on the porch, George. I'll be right out. Can you see? Is Patsy with him? I don't think so. Want some iced tea, George? No, none for me, Harley. <coughs> Didn't pull you away from the table, did I? No, no. Listen, I've got a favor to ask. About Bill. Yeah, that's one of the reasons I came here. 
That nephew of yours is talking marriage to my Patsy. It's just talk. Eh, he's got no prospects, no future. That's why I wanted to talk to you. He loafs all day and spoons all night. He wants to go to college. Well, who doesn't? George, listen. Bill's education was interrupted by his service in the Navy. Now he's got a chance to get into state, but it's overcrowded. He's got an appointment with your boss tomorrow. Remember the commission? Why don't you put in a word for him? State universities are almost 200 miles from here. You couldn't see much of Patsy under those conditions. Harley, that's a thought. That's a very good thought. You'll speak to Flanagan? Call him the first thing in the morning before I leave. Where are you going? Up to the Capitol. Just for a day, though. That's the real purpose of this visit. And now, I've got a dandy, Harley. Got my hands on a dandy. Yeah, this reminds me of the old days. Dandy what? Moneymaker. What else? No, George. Hey, you haven't even heard it yet. I tell you, it's out. Tomorrow, I'm climbing on the Sunrise Special with a fly rod and a hat full of flies, and nothing is going to stand in my way. Not even 125 bucks? No. Just for sitting by your phone until I get back from the state capitol tomorrow night? How can I be worth $125 just sitting by my phone? Well, I thought of it as kind of a going-away present. Soon as the idea came to me this morning, I said to myself, now, Harley could use some of this money. What money? For the rugs. What rugs? The oriental rugs that the knife grinder told my wife about. Sure. It's the deal of a lifetime. Half a dozen priceless oriental rugs. I bought them for $250. From the knife grinder? It, it, of course not. From the auction at the Bell Estate. Where does your wife come into this? Well, I told you she spoke to the knife grinder. He's Turkish or something like that. He knows rugs like the back of his hand. Harley, you'll double your investment. What investment is that? Hey, you're $125. You see, the rugs cost me $250, and half of that is... I know what half of $250 is. Say, Uncle Harley... Oh, hello, Mr. Downs. <laughs> Even will you, my boy? Uh, am I intruding? No. Sit down. We're just discussing some business. George is going to speak to the commissioner about you tomorrow. Thanks a lot, Mr. Downs. Not at all, my boy. So you see, Harley, in 24 hours, you'll double your money. I will? Yes, because I'll put it in the grapevine that these rugs are available for $500. So while I'm up at the Capitol, you just sit by the telephone tomorrow and take the first offer that comes along. George, I don't know. I hate to put this trip off. Well, it's just for one day, Harley. After all, those fish aren't going to run away. That's right, Skipper. Yeah, wh what? Er, just what you said, Mr. Downs. The fish aren't going to run away. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, that's my point. Now, uh, I've got the rugs right out in my car here. You brought them along? Well, you'd have to be able to turn them over to the buyer tomorrow, won't you? All right, all right. Come on, Bill. Lose a hand. What are these rugs doing in the vestibule? <sighs> George Downs just dropped them off. Business deal. Well, you carry them in here yourself? No. He and Bill helped me. Oh. George had to run off to some meeting. Phew. Those things are heavier than they look. Good evening, Grace. Oh, Walter. Uh, come in, will you? I just have to go up and get my hat. Good evening, Walter. Good evening, Mr. Ferguson. How are you enjoying your retirement? So far, it hasn't been bad. What's this junk? Junk? Oh, they're rugs, aren't they? Genuine foreign imported rugs. Someone give them to you? Yes, you might say that, Walter. Considering their real value, I guess you might say someone gave them to me. How many are there? Six, now that you ask. Well, they're in terrible shape. Still, they might do. Might do. I'll say they'll do. They'll just do me into an extra two weeks of fishing, that's all. I'll give you $100 for all six of them. <laughs> $100? We can use them down at the former officers of World War II Club. Former officers? <laughs> the first place, what's the meaning of a club like that? And second, what is... Dad, the... will you get that, please? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> $100. Hello? Yeah, oh, oh, hello, Henry. 
No, no, no. Listen, I, uh, I'd like to cancel my reservation till the day after tomorrow. Think you can take care of me then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I've got a little uh, business deal on. Fine, fine. Sunrise special Friday. Fine. Thanks a lot. Mr. Ferguson, I've just noticed something. Walter, please don't insult me with an offer like that again. Who told you these rugs were genuine Orientals? An expert? A Turkish expert who happens to know. They are fakes. Walter, I realize you know everything in the world. Come here. I'll show you something. The man who recommended these rugs happens to come from Turkey. Look, see the design here on the front? Definitely a Turkish design. Now look, when I turn it over, nothing on the other side. What of it? Who looks at the bottom of a rug? On a genuine oriental, the design shows through because it's woven. This design is stamped on. It's a phony, or rather, it's a domestic. And who ever heard of a domestic foreign rug? They speak of them as domestic orientals. Well, this is an oriental oriental. A genuine oriental, except that it's not. According to the Turkish knife grinder. Knife grinder? Did you buy these rugs on the advice of a knife Never grinder? Never mind how I bought them. The point is... All right. All right. Don't take my word for it. Call Mr. Zabajian down at the carpet store. He's Turkish. He'll tell you they're domestic. They're alien. Don't take my word. Call him. For once in your life, Walter, you're dead wrong. Six rugs, uh, five by seven. A hundred dollars is a generous offer. I wouldn't consider it. Call Mr. Zabajian. I'll be by tomorrow night, if you're still interested. So then, Commissioner Flanagan said, My boy, any friend of Mr. George Downs is a friend of mine. If my recommendation will help you get into college this fall, then you've got it. Isn't that great, Uncle Harley? Yeah, that, that's great, Bill. <laughs> oh, he's a real great guy, that Commissioner. Yeah, he must be. Say, I forgot to ask, did you sell those rugs today? Mm, no, not exactly. Get any offers? Well, uh, one, yes, but I, I don't think I'll take it. You know, I wish I had the head for business that you and Mr. Downs have. Double your money in 24 hours. Boy, that's really going. Hey, Bill. You were out here on the porch last night when George and I were discussing the deal. Did, did I actually promise to put up half the money? Oh, yes, sir. I did, eh? Yes, sir. $125 while we were carrying in the rugs. I, I sort of thought I did, but I wasn't sure. Wish I was able to get in on a deal like that. Well, you, 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 you don't want to rush into these things, Bill. Wait until you're a little older and always make sure when someone comes along with an offer that you... Oh, maybe that's Georgie. You ought to be getting in town pretty soon. It's after seven. Bill, it's for you. Is it Patsy? No, it's a man. I wonder who'd be calling me. Dad, would you like me to bring out some more iced tea for you? No, no, thanks, honey. Uh... Walter uh, told me about the rugs at lunch today. Oh, he did? Mm-hmm. Did you call Mr. Zerbadzian? I called him. Well, what did he say they were worth? About $100. Oh, Dad, I have warned you about those deals with George Downs a I thousand times. I know, I know, I know. I ought to have my head examined. Oh. Well, this is the last time. Last time, mm. never, never again. Under Harley! Under Harley! I, I sold them! I sold them! What? I sold the rugs! Well, what do you mean you, you, you sold them? For $600. A hundred apiece for each one. A hundred apiece? Now, Grace, we... oh, hold on, hold on. Why, that's outright theft. Grace, will you keep you... your opinions to yourself for a minute? What's this all about, Bill? I've got a customer for the rugs. Oh, well, it's robbery. That's what it is. It's robbery. Well, what's eating her? Never mind. What do you mean, you sold the rugs? Just what I said. To whom? Oh, no, Uncle Harley. Let's you and I dicker for a minute. Now, you were willing to take 500 for them, isn't that right? Uh, yes. Well, I'm getting 600. Shouldn't I get that extra 100 for commission? Well, now, no. <laughs> wait a minute, Bill. Yeah, I mean, after all, didn't I find the buyer? Yes, but... It's but... not just the money, Uncle Harley. I know Mr. Downs doesn't think I've got very much on the ball. Now, what's that got to do with it, Bill? Well, maybe he'll think a little better of me if I show him I'm not so dumb when it comes to working a business deal. Good enough, Bill. But can't you tell me who it is? Well, if I tell you and you tell Mr. Downs, he may go direct to the customer and I'll get cut out. Isn't that possible? Bill, you're going to do all right. 
Say, that's George's car pulling up right now. Oh, my gosh. You won't say I said that about him, will you, Uncle I Ollie? won't have to. He'll know you're thinking it. I don't want him to get sore at me. Don't be silly. When I tell him the whole story, he'll be tickled pink. What do you mean, the whole story? Evening, Harley. Uh, will you, my boy? Mr. Downs? How you doing, George? Uh, big day, Harley. Big day at the Capitol. Mish has a lot of irons in the fire. Sit down. Yeah. Incidentally, uh, Commissioner Flanagan saw Bill this morning, says he'll do everything he can to get him into state this fall. Well, now that's just fine. I sure want to thank you, Mr. Downs. Well, not at all, my boy, not at all. It means a lot to me. Well, you just knuckle down when you get up to state. That's all the thanks I want. Yes, sir, I sure will. George, aren't you uh, going to ask about the rugs? Well, uh, <clears throat> Harley, I... I want to apologize about that. That's why I came by. Apologize? Yes, yes. Uh, you see, I told you I'd pass the word through the grapevine that you had them, but I barely got a chance to tell anyone. Well, George, I've got a big surprise for you. We won't need that grapevine. Uh, uh-huh. They're sold. Sold a whole lot of them just ten minutes ago. And let me tell you, it saved our lives. On the square? That's right, but, well, there's a little string tied to this one. You mean we didn't get the price we wanted? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, $500. That was the price, wasn't it? Yeah, it sure was. Uh, yeah, honey, you're a genius. Didn't I say they'd beat a path to your door? Oh, now, don't get the wrong idea. It wasn't quite that easy. In fact, I had to call in a broker on the deal. A uh, broker? No, 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 don't cloud up. We got our five. That's what we expected, isn't it? <laughs> sure, sure, sure. But uh, how much did the rugs go for? Six. Six hundred? Say, he must be quite an operator. Who was it? Bill here. What? That's right, Mr. Downs. How about that, George? Well, I'll be darned. Say, how about that? Didn't I tell you not to underestimate this boy? Now he gets to keep that extra hundred, doesn't he? Well, he sure does. And, William, I am beginning to see you in a new light. Yes, sir, a new light indeed. <laughs> thanks, thanks. Uh, say, uh, is it okay if I go in and call Patsy and tell her the good news? Well, I don't see why not, William, my boy. Maybe if you'll lend me the car again tonight, Uncle Harley. Okay, Bill, okay, just don't spend your earnings all in one place. Oh, I won't. Say, uh, by the way, who was it you sold those rugs to? Can you tell us now? No backing out? No, sir, my boy. With us, our words as good as our bond. It was Commissioner Flanagan. Who? The commission. On the square? Yeah. I mentioned them this morning when I went to see him, and he called back tonight and said it was a deal. Well, how do you like that? I'll be down in a few minutes. George. The commission himself. George, listen, we're in a jam. A jam? Those rugs aren't worth what they're cracked up to be. Uh, what are you talking about? Grace's boyfriend came by last night, Walter. The rugs aren't genuine. Well, what does Walter know? Everything. Believe me, they're not worth over a hundred. The whole lot. Oh, you're wrong, Harley. The knife grinder. Should stick to grinding knives. I checked with Mr. Sabagian at the carpet store this morning. You were taken. You mean that we were taken? Have it your own way. But now your boss is about to be taken. The commission? Oh, no, no. When he finds out where those rugs hey, came don't from... Don't say it. Don't say it. He won't. He, he, he mustn't. Yeah, I, I'd be ruined. That nitwit nephew of yours, why didn't you stop him? Stop him? I, I didn't even know the customer. All I saw was a chance to recoup our losses. Pony rugs to the commission. 300,000 people in this town and he has to fleece the commission. That's not exactly right, George. Bill doesn't know they're phonies. When I found out, I was ashamed to tell anyone. Okay, okay, so it's your fault. That's why you've got to stop the deal. What'll we tell him? Why not tell him the truth? We thought the rugs were genuine. It turns out that they no, aren't. No, 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 no. I'd never live it down. George, who'd have to know? Uh, you think he wouldn't tell Patsy about this? And after that, I'd never be able to say boo in my own house again. No, that's out. I got it. Uh, what? Your wife wants them. She started over, and she wants them for your front room. The study? All right, the study. Then he won't notice they aren't there when he comes over to the house, eh? That's good. After all, you bought the rugs in the first place. Yeah, it was my wife who spotted them, liked them. He's bound to believe it. Well, what can he say? Well, now, that does raise a question. Don't forget that we... I told Patsy I'd be right over. Can I have the car keys, Uncle Harley? Well, uh, 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 yeah, yeah, it's here, Bill, but... Uh, Bill, uh, uh, there's something we'd like to tell you, my boy. Sure, Mr. Downs. I, uh, I, um... Well, I appreciate your working out such a smart deal with the commission. After all, uh, 
But, 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 uh, I've been thinking it over, and, uh... Yes? Uh, uh, Bill, uh, George feels that maybe he'd like those rugs for himself. Uh, for his own house. It, it's really my wife who wants them. Uh, she thinks they're right for my study. Oh, Mr. Downs, you're a sharp operator. I've got to hand it to you. Yeah, how's that, my boy? What did I tell you, Uncle Harley? Well, Bill, it's not what you think. George really wants those rugs. Oh, I don't doubt that. I mean for himself, for his own use. Didn't I say he'd think of a way to get around me? Now, just a minute, Bill. I hope you're not entertaining any doubts about my veracity. No, no, Mr. Downs. It's nothing personal. Business is business. If you don't need the middleman, cut him out when you can. Bill, you're not getting the correct picture on this at all. George isn't going to sell the rugs. He's going to keep them. Sure, Uncle Harley, I understand. Those rugs are going on the floor of my study sooner or later. That's okay, Mr. Downs. I respect a sharp trader as much as the next man. But it's going to be a little hard for me to explain. Eh? Explain to who? Why, to your daughter, Patsy. Eh? I said I'd take her out dancing to Moonbeam Lodge tomorrow night and buy her a charm bracelet she's been wanting. Hmm? Uh, George? I tell you, uh, 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 Will, uh, why don't you come over to dinner tomorrow night, will you, my boy? Well, thanks, I'd like to. George, I feel we're being a little unfair to Bill. After all, he stood to make $100 on this deal. Well, yes, uh, but that was if we sold the rug. I know, but consider all we've paid for those genuine oriental rugs from Turkey was a pittance compared to their real worth. Yes, 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 that's true, but... Uh, well, uh, even if they cost you another hundred, they'd still be a bargain, wouldn't they? Well, not a question about it at all, but uh, uh, what do you mean, another hundred? It uh, just occurred to me that the real loser on this deal is Bill. Unless, of course, you'd like to make it up to him by giving him a hundred. Giving him a hundred? That'd be agreeable to you, wouldn't it, Bill? Oh, I think that'd be very generous, Uncle Harley. Then that way, Patsy wouldn't be disappointed, and you could do anything with those rugs you wanted to, George. If you wanted to put them in your study, fine. If you just wanted to leave them here for a while, nobody'd be the wiser. I'm sure Bill wouldn't say anything about it to Patsy, would you, Bill? Oh, I'd never even bring it up. Uh, all right, a hundred dollars. <laughs> wow, that's very generous of you, Mr. Downs. Can I give you a lift home? Thanks. I've got my own car. And uh, you won't say anything to Patsy about this? Oh, no, sir. Yeah, you know how women are. If they learn that you're a soft touch, they'll rag you to death. Mum's the word, Mr. Downs. Well, good night. <clears throat> yeah. Good night, Uncle Harley. Have a good time, Bill. Don't be late. Oh. Well, Harley? Uh, gonna be shoving along, George? Yeah, yeah. I told the commission I'd drop in on him sometime this evening. Think you can explain about the rugs? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll say I came by here and recognized them as, uh, as uh, what is it they are? Domestic Oriental. Yeah, that's right. I'll say that Bill couldn't possibly have known the difference, that only a trained eye could distinguish them. He'll probably thank you. Yeah, well, that's what I'm banking on. Still doesn't solve the problem of what to do with them, though, does it? I've got a scheme. Hmm? To kill a couple of birds with the same stone. Huh? Eh? Yeah? Well, what's that? Just coming up the walk. Evening, Mr. Ferguson. Oh, Mr. Don. Ah, how do you do? Evening, Walter. Well, I, I was just leaving. Uh, good night, Harley. Mr. Tate. Good night, Mr. Downs. In my regards to the commission, George. Oh, yes, I, I'll do that. Well, sit down, Walter. Grace will be out in a minute. Thank you, sir. Pretty busy day at the shoe store? About so-so. Oh, oh, excuse me. Grace! Grace, Walter's here. I'll just be a minute. Hello, Walter. Hello, Grace. Hey, uh, tell me something, Walter, my boy. Yes, sir. How long have you and Grace been going together? Oh, quite some time. About ten years, isn't it? Uh, yes, give or take a few months. You uh, haven't been holding back on my account, have you? Well, to be frank, Mr. Ferguson, I've, I've never felt you were enthusiastic about me. And then, too, I know that Grace is, well, fond of you. I hope so. But I'm retired now. I can take care of myself. Also, I'm more enthusiastic than you know. Really? Why, sure. I think you ought to speak up. Grace isn't going to wait forever, you know. Do you really think I should, Mr. Ferguson? Walter, a fellow as smart as you shouldn't have to ask a question like that. Well, I... 
I've wanted to for a long then time. Then why don't you just decide that tonight's the night? I'll do it. I know that starting a home isn't easy. And don't worry, I'll help. Oh, no, 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 Mr. Ferguson. I don't expect you to do a no, thing. No, 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 no. There's a lot of furniture around here that'll never be missed. Things of graces and stuff, rugs and... Hello, Walter. Hello, Grace. I'll get that. You uh, kids go ahead. Good night, Mr. Ferguson. And thanks. Anytime, Walter. Good night, Dad. Good night, honey. Hello? Oh, hello, Henry. Yes, fine, fine. Sure, I'm all set. Got my tackle pack and everything. You bet. Sunrise special, 7.30. I'll be there. How do I like being retired? Henry, I've never been so busy in all my life. This is Mitzi Gaynor again with just a thought before we say goodnight. I suppose the subject closest to all our hearts just now is peace and how to find it. If we turn to God, talk to him, really pray with a faith that he will hear our prayers, we will find an inner peace. The man who is at peace with himself is at peace with his neighbor. Prayer and prayer alone can bring peace to the world. God is ready to give us much if we ask him. Is it so hard to ask? Is it too difficult to take a little time each day to be alone with God, to sit in silence and pray to him? Gather all those moments you waste as a rule and utilize them for the wonderful purpose of prayer and see how your life changes, how much more happiness you find, how different your fellow man appears and acts. It's worth the trial, isn't it? So begin tonight and every night. Pray with your family and experience greater joy in one another, in your home and in God. Yes, the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you transcribed Six of One, starring Wallace Ford. Mitzi Gaynor was your hostess. Others in our cast were Gigi Pearson, Sam Edwards, Leo Curley, and Howard Culver. The script was written and directed for Family Theater by John T. Kelly, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the Mutual Network, which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our Family Theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of Family Theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to join us next week when Family Theater will present The Other Sheep, starring Jim Backus. Barry Sullivan will be your host. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America. Thank you.